Six to seven inches of snow on January 6th or 7th. Yeah, I said six, seven already twice in this video, now three times, making all the kids happy around the area, right? But no, there seriously is a signal showing up in the models. And yes, I've seen some of the ones that go a little bonkers with snow across the south. And right now, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to see an active pattern here. That's about all that I know at this detail. But in this video, I'm going to detail the timing and the track that could bring in a chance for some activity across the deep south in the mid-Atlantic areas that really haven't seen good snow in a while other than the Northeast where you've seen a couple already this season. Let's break down that pattern. and Here we are going into New Year's. We got this cold blast coming in today. Boy, it is getting cold all across the East. Even Florida going to get on the action tonight into tomorrow. Uh, heads up, iguanas in Florida. We're going to see them be a little stunned, but this pattern really doesn't let go through that first 10 days of January. Yeah, we may moderate back to near normal, but there's going to be other shots that come in. Let me show you that. Here we are going into January 3rd. A little dip of the jet stream brings in some light rain, something like that. But by the 5th and 6th, you see this piece of energy coming in through the Midwest and the Great Lakes. That oftentimes is a clipper type system and, and doesn't bring much good storm track activity for the South. That said, it can sometimes surprise you. That would be on the 6th. And then we got one showing up 7th into 8th right here. That's a deeper, more broad one. So cold air is nearby. There's storm activity around. Do the two ever match up? That's going to be what we have to iron out in the days to come. Let me show you a couple of solutions. Here's the Canadian model. I position this here because this is the low pressure system in question on the 8th. There's another one on the 10th and 11th and one before that. So we've got at least three to four storm systems to track, most of which look to not merge with cold air and moisture. But this one here on the 8th would be one to watch. You've got a classic low pressure system right in here over Mississippi. You've got to decide where this track is going to go. Cold air is nearby up here. You see some of that on the fringes, seeing a little bit of snow. you got some ice entrenched against the Western North Carolina mountains. Now, does this low take a dive right here and then cold air wraps in around it? That changes over to some snow in the Western Carolinas. It's possible, but I wouldn't expect it from this first one. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here's the upper level pattern here. And this is the GFS kind of just zoomed out a little bit more. Uh, as we go through the first few days of January, we are cold. I mean, we, we do moderate the air mass a little bit toward the third and fourth, maybe even getting it closer back to normal. But we see that couple of dips in the jet stream here across the east. There's the sixth. Same thing showing up on the GFS model here. Here's the 7th. So the 6th, the 7th, the 8th all have storm signals, but right now they look like quick hits of some rain and little reinforcing shots of cold air. I wouldn't expect any sinking cold air, winter storm type scenarios in that. Is it possible? Yes, things like that can surprise us, but that would not be the signal that I would look out for and kind of go out and buy some sleds for. Now, if I'm trying to go skiing, I've got some friends asking me, when should we plan a getaway to go stay in a cabin and just hope for some snow? Well, I think in Western North Carolina, that first weekend of January, the, the, the 5th, I think it is, going into that weekend, there could be some snow in the high country. That would be really about it, maybe up through Snowshoe. But let me show you what I'm thinking might be our next pattern. Now, it's way out there, so the details are murky. And before the internet police come after me, I'm telling you with some context here. What I'm showing you is just kind of broad level. I'm not telling you it's going to snow. I'm not guaranteeing it. Uh, you know, There's so much misinformation out there. Where people just kind of share things without context, and I'm aware of that. I am not one of those people, so don't put me in that category, um, you know, internet police. But uh, here we are. If I can't talk about a pattern, then, then what are we doing? But I can do it responsibly. Here we are with a signal here toward mid-January, and that would be a better signal for us. The southern jet stream's now got some activity. See that dip right there? That would be one we need to watch for even Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Missouri, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas, even into Tennessee. That dip and that track could mean some activity. And the GFS hints at that in a couple of different runs here. You know, it's going to pick one here. Now, this could very well disappear as the trend comes on, but a track like that, that I just showed you more broadly, spits out a forecast like this. You got some rain forming in Texas, Louisiana. It's subdued. It, it, that Miller A, Miller B type thing takes off, and the upper level energy kind of activates that. That breaks out some snow in North Georgia and the Western Carolinas. Now, this is way, way, way out there. So does this bring snow to the Western Carolinas? Maybe. 
Uh, but there's no way of certainly knowing. We do know there's a signal here. And as I look at other evidence for the pattern taking shape to possibly give us some activity, we are in a negative North Atlantic oscillation. You're thinking, what in the big words does that mean? Well, anytime we're negative, it favors more activity. Uh, there's more blocking. The jet stream just kind of sends in more cold shots. And this can lead to more active storm track and, and colder air being nearby. We are negative right now. It, it, and it's one of those situations where when you turn positive or you turn negative, it doesn't immediately turn your pattern around. We've been turning negative for a while now, hence why we're just now turning cold. So we stay there with some activity fluctuating all the way through the 10th, which is why I think we got until about mid-January before you know we kind of take a break for chances. And then toward the end of January, uh, we are going to, to look for things to kind of level out a little bit uh, with maybe some activity around the last seven days, 10 days of January. So still trying to pinpoint that out. Now, we do have evidence that this NOAA, you know, we'll try to look at it hence for. This is the extended temperature outlook through the 3rd through the 7th. Now, notice some orange here. This doesn't tell you how above normal temperatures are, just it tells you what's the greatest chance of being above normal. So all you really need is normal or close to it. And we have that across the Carolinas up through the Northeast. Now let's go with the activity. This is precipitation. It looks like we're actually turning wetter after being so dry. Florida can't buy a drop of rain. We'll use any kind of rain we can get here. This is the third through the seventh. Let's take that one step farther here. This is the fifth through the 11th, near normal for most of the Carolinas with slightly above normal uh, chance here from Georgia and Alabama back through Tennessee. That would be through the 5th through the 11th. And during that time frame, we are also seeing an above normal storm track with this highlighted here. Now this tells me you've got this kind of track that sets up starting in Texas and kind of riding up like that. That would be the track that I would be watching for, which we saw modeled out a couple of different times and a couple of different ways in the GFS and the European. So nobody has it completely right right now. The European, the GFS, none of them do, but they all have an idea. And that at this point is all you really need. So if you equate it back to tropical systems, if we see a hurricane signal, we don't start freaking out. No, uh, we wait until we see some consistency. When you get consistency, you get more confident in the pattern and the forecast. And that gives you a forecast you can kind of hang your hat on. So simply put, active storm pattern, cold air nearby, a couple of different shots that we have for some wintry weather. But I wouldn't look for that until about mid-January for most of us across the South. Some of you want to see it. Is there a chance before that? Yeah, we could get surprised here. But the models are all in agreement with more activity and colder air being nearby. Don't think it's going to be on the 6th or 7th, but that does kickstart it. And we can have a little fun with 6-7 before that uh, gets real old real fast. For you teachers, I know you're already there. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, sure appreciate you. Back on WYFF4 tonight at 4, 5, 6, and 11 o'clock. I hope to see you then, and we'll talk soon and have another update on this pattern as the afternoon models do come in. I'll have another update for you later today.